and welcome back to Cooking with Sarah. I apologize for my absence last week, but it was ridiculously late when I got home, and I still had some other stuff to do. Unfortunately, I just wasn't able to get an episode out on time. But that's okay. We are back this week. I just got home from a lovely visit with my family, including one of my biggest fans, my little niece, who watches my videos. Hi, Gabs. How you doing? <laughs> So, today we are looking at, um, we're t having a little uh, Cinco de Mayo celebration out here, a little background. Cinco de Mayo is not Mexican Independence Day, as you might have thought. It is instead just a celebration of Mexican heritage and pride, commemorates the Battle of Puebla, I believe it was, back, I don't remember what year. But that, today, it is just a simple, simply a celebration of heritage and pride, and food, and festivities, and all that good stuff. So, that is your kind of a TLDR history lesson for the day. But, the part we are most concerned with, naturally, is going to be the food. So, let me get back in first person, get me a hot bar back, oops, get back into survival. Okay, I have a uh, buffet table here with a little spread on it. We've got, um, now, a little uh, disclaimer here. What I am about to show you is not so much authentic Mexican food as it is Tex-Mex. And even at that, it's um, it's bordering on Taco Bell Tex-Mex. A Le little bit of friendly advice. If you want to go have some Mexican food t today or any other day, steer clear of Taco Bell if you can. Steer clear of the big chains if you can. I realize in some parts of the country that's just not an option, but um, to be quite honest, the best Mexican food you're going to get in this part of town, uh, here in Houston, it's either going to come from a hole in the wall that you would look, you would drive past and think, ew, no, you go in there, they're going to have amazing food, or you get it off a truck. So <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is a, this is what we have available to us thanks to Harvest Craft, so we'll, we'll make do, we'll make do. So I've got a, a couple different kinds of burritos, um, the basic tortilla that the burritos are built off of, some tacos. I've got both fish and uh, regular tacos. We have a cactus soup here, which kind of goes along with the spirit of things. I'm not sure if Nopalito soup is actually a thing, but you know we're, we're going to roll with it today. We've got roasted corn. I don't know how that lettuce got there. We've got guacamole. We've got eh, nachos, which is... Um, about as Mexican as uh, poutine, honestly. <laughs> Refried beans, and finally dulce de leche ice cream to finish off. So let's head on into the restaurant, which I am uh, slowly remodeling to get rid of the uh, pearl bricks that my bricks got replaced with at some point. I'm replacing them with the Extra Utilities colored brown bricks. They look much better. So let's head on in here. The first thing we're going to want to make is tortillas. Tortillas are very simple. You take cornmeal, which, hello, let's, um, will you show me now? Oh wait, I'm using the wrong key, there we go. It's a mortar, mortar and pestle and corn, that's all it is, <coughs> excuse me. So you mix your cornmeal, this is for corn tortillas, of course, um, in real life you also have the option. I'm an, I'm an adventure. You also have the uh, option of flour tortillas. Personally, I prefer flour. My stepmom prefers corn. It's it's up to you. But the corn tortilla, as you will find in Harvest Craft, cornmeal and fresh water, and you pat it out nice and flat, put it in your skillet, fry it on both sides, kind of like a pancake, but you know not quite as fluffy. <coughs> and with that, with that tortilla, you will be able to make your tacos and your burritos and your nachos as well. And even as nachos go, these are pretty weak sauce. Um, there is more to nachos than tortilla chips with cheese on them. The, you, in real life, you'll see them with everything from avocado chunks to guacamole to sour cream to pico de gallo, which is, if you don't know, it's basically a really chunky salsa. It's tomato chunks, pepper chunks, onion chunks, maybe some lime juice. You'll see uh, refried beans on them. Did I already mention that? You'll see olives. You'll see green onions, regular onions, whatever. 
but yeah, I mean, it's it's not just chips with cheese on them. So yeah, th these are ballpark nachos. These are bar nachos. These are not your, and even bar nachos are better than these, honestly. But anyway, that's what we have. Let's roll with it. Our tacos are just a, l are a little more authentic here. You have your taco shell and your cheese. And again, cheese is um, either soy milk or regular milk, salt, and a pot. Or you can use the agriculture cheese, which I think, let's see if I believe it's, um, how do we do the agriculture cheese? Oh, that's um, milk and vinegar on the counter. Okay. But anyway, they are interchangeable. You take um, steak or you can use tofu. I believe you can also use chicken or pork, depending on what kind of specific taco you want. Some lettuce, shredded, your cheese. Stuff it into a taco shell. You can also do a fish taco, which is basically the same thing, except instead of your other meat, you use a cooked fish. Simple. Easy. Guacamole is probably, strangely enough, the most complex recipe we have today. It's a cutting board on which you chop up your avocado, you chop up a chili pepper, some spice leaves, a tomato, onion, and then you mix it up in the mixing bowl, mush up the avocado and everything. Now there is, um, in real life, you have the issue of the guacamole turning brown. How do you deal with that? Well, there are some people who say if you leave the pit in it, it doesn't turn brown. Personally, I found that to be bunk. Uh, <laughs> what happens is the avocado meets the air and it oxidizes and gets that nasty brown on it. There are a couple of things you can do about that. You can kind of, you know, get some lemon juice on it, something that will insulate it, keep it from oxidizing. Or you can just take your plastic wrap and just flatten it right down over the top of the guacamole if you're going to put it in the fridge. For the avocado itself, you can put it in a Ziploc bag, suck all the air out of it, and seal it. And that will keep your avocado alive for, you know, a couple more days. And as an aside, instead of guacamole, what I like to do is, if I'm just, if it's just me, I'll take the avocado and cut it up in slices and dri drizzle a little bit of balsamic vinegar on and a little bit of kosher salt, and it's amazing. Anyway, um, we have the caramel ice cream. We're going to hold off on that right now. We're going to go over here to the other table. Right here, I have the cactus soup going. A stock you can make out of all kinds of stuff. Oops, I used the wrong key again. <laughs> but if you have a skelly spawner, you are home free. All you need is a mixing bowl and a pot and a bone. And that will make you three stocks or mixing bowl, pot, and any meat. Or bamboo or sweet potatoes. Or quite a few vegetables, actually. Potato stock, mushroom stock. Hey, so good. You have some vegetarian options there. But to upgrade that stock to cactus soup, you would take your cactus, despined de and sliced, and just you know boil it up in your stock in your pot. Now here we have um, roasted corn. Now if you are running around down here in the Houston area, you'll see if you go to Fiesta supermarkets, if you go, if you. Sometimes at uh, the parks they'll have a food truck with it out. Sometimes the, the uh, snow cone stands will even have it. They have roasted corn. You can either get it on the cob with the husks and all, which you kind of use as a handle, or you can get it in a cup, which you know they, they roast it and they scrape it off. Either way, that when you find it that way, it will generally not just be buttered corn. It will be slathered with mayo and cheese and uh, some, some chili powder. And it's just amazing. It's so much better than just plain old corn on the cob. But that's what we have to work with, so we'll, we'll roll with it again, like I said. Your refried beans are pretty simple. Take your beans, cooked beans, mash them up with onions and butter, and you know, fry them up in your skillet. Now, um, real refried beans are not going to use butter most of the time. They're going to use lard. That's right. Good old pig fat. But lard is not an option. <laughs> so, you know, we again, we go with what we have. Now, in real life, a bean burrito would most likely have refried beans in it. But here we're using just plain old regular beans for our bean burrito. We're using the tortilla, which I just showed you. 
and you use rice, either the growth craft rice or the harvest craft rice, which I have here, and some cheese. And ch real burritos that you find will have other stuff in them too. They'll have tomatoes, they'll have pico, they'll have salsa, they'll have sour cream, they'll have all kinds of stuff. The avocado burrito is basically the same thing, except instead of the beans and rice, you get avocado and you have some kind of meat. And we're using chicken here today, and I'm just going to grab one of those because that looks really tasty. So I'm going to just kind of cram that in my face right here. Mm, I love avocados. For dessert, we have dulce de leche ice cream. Now there's actually, you can make ice cream. Um, and I will... Uh, See, I think the caramel recipe uses... Okay. You can do it the hard way, which is a pot, a mixing bowl, some kind of milk, either soy milk or cow milk, salt, and snowballs. Or you can do it the way we're, we're going to use the uh, vegan version today. We're going to use silken tofu and freeze it with caramel. Now, how do you get caramel? There's two ways you can do it. You can either do saucepan and sugar if you don't want to have to babysit it, or you can come over here to the um, agriculture oven, and it needs some fuel. I thought I had some coal in there. I'll just steal it from the processor. Let's put that all in there. This method, you will have to keep an eye on it. Otherwise, it will burn, and it will be sad, and you will cry. So if you want the more realistic cooking mechanic, go with the agriculture. There it is. Okay. <laughs> Does not take long at all. And I'm just going to see. Am I hungry enough to eat that just as it is? No, I'm not. Okay, well, I'm going to throw it in the, in the cabinet here. What do you drink with your Mexican feast, with your Tex-Mex feast? Well, if you are an adult, beer. Beer is good. Get yourself an ice-cold cerveza. And I'm going to turn the rain off because uh, that's annoying. There we go. Get yourself a cold beer with a wedge of lime, either a Dos Equis or, or a Corona, which is my personal favorite, or Tecate, however you want to do that. Uh, Coca-Cola, uh, <laughs> product placement. Uh, cola in a bottle is also good. That's a, that's a popular drink. They have um, various juices, smoothies. Um, I have a horchata, which is, unfortunately, I don't think I have a recipe for in any way, shape, or form. But it is a kind of a sweet, kind of almost milky drink that's made out of rice. And it's really good. Kind of got a little bit of cinnamon taste to it. Real refreshing. Coconut water, whatever you want. So that is our quick little Tex-Mex feast for Cinco de Mayo. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, if there is any kind of specific cuisine you would like to see me do, or if there is a food mod out there that I don't know about, as uh, you might have seen a couple of weeks ago, I'm auditioning some 1.7 food mods, so if there is one that you are aware of that I haven't seen, just let me know in the comments if you'd like to see it, or any other food mod you'd like to see, just hit me up and I will see what I can do for you. So until next time, folks, bon appetit, I will see you later. Bye-bye.